This system, the one which we have right now, it doesn't look like it is a in a triangular shape, but by doing some systematic modifications to this system, and I will single out every step, and I'll, the job of course, I'll, the, our job of course here is to make this, we can, we, can lot, we can do lots of modifications to the system. We can scale one equation, we can add them up, we can subtract them, we can swap them, we can, I don't know, bring one unknown to the other side. There are lots of different elementary uh, modifications you can do to this system. The, our job is actually to find the minimal set of these modifications, which will always do the job for us, no matter how complex the system is. And I'll, I'll demonstrate to you this, 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 element, uh, this uh, minimal set of operations which, is suffi which suffice for every system. So for this one, uh, the method generally goes like this. Out of these three equations, we just choose the one which looks the simplest one. And out of this three, the simplest one look for me, it's just it's, it's, a, it's the second one. So first thing I will do, I will just swap the rows in a different order, making this making this equation first one. So my first equation now will be the second one. Uh, my second one probably will be the third one. I'm making, I'm basing my decision, I'm basing my decision on the look of the highest coefficient, of the leftmost coefficient here. And the one obviously is the easiest one. And the remaining equation will be the third one. This type of operations, they, we call them a row swap. And if I, yeah, so if I call this row the first row, if I call this row the second row, and if I call this row the third row, what will, what happened here is that we, what what happened here? We took the second row and we put it in the first position. We took the we took the third row and put it into the second position, and we took the one, the row number one, and we put it in the third position. Now, what I can do now, I can just use this, I can use this equation, the first one, and by doing, what I can do is this, look at this, I can take my first equation, and I can do now the following manipulation with this equation, look at this, I can take the second row, this second row, and I can, su I can subtract from that row the first one scaled by one. The purpose of this is just, but the purpose of this step is to vanish this two. Because if I do these manipulations with these first two rows, this will kill the presence of x. Multiplying this row, multiplying this row by negative two across this row and adding, adding to the second one will make zero in this position. So the result of that will be uh, the position here, y, it will be negative 2 plus uh, negative 1, so it's negative 3, negative 3, sorry, and negative 2 plus z, it's negative z, the right-hand side becomes negative 8, negative 9. That's how it becomes looking. Now, if I want to cancel this 3, and that's my objective here, because I'm slashing the, these un unnecessary elements to make my system look like a triangle, to cancel this one, I have to, multi I have to multiply my first row by negative three now and add it down here. In symbolic form, this look like this. I take the third row and I subtract three of the first rows and add, I'll put on the third position. So the result of that will be, if I multiply this by negative three with x, it's gone. If I multiply this y with negative three and I add this two, it will be negative one. That's why we have negative one here. With z, it's negative three plus another negative one, it's negative four. The right hand side, it's here will be negative 12 and negative two, negative 14. Right, uh, we're close to the triangular shape. We're close to the triangular shape. All we have to do now, we have to get rid of this y. But before we do that, in fact, I think it's easier if we swap these two equations. If I take this equation and I put this in here, uh, well, on my slide, actually, I have a copy of this, of this, of this whole three, so I have a copy of the first equation, and I have a copy of the third one, which is now sitting in the second position, and I have a copy of the last one. You don't have to copy that. You can just, just say, just we swap. We swap these two rows, and you can 
you can encode this like with this with this symbol. We swap the row R2 and R3. And now for the remaining remaining two, I can do again, I can do again similar transformation like this. By using this second equation, I can vanish this negative three. All I have to do, I have to multiply this by negative three and add this to the last one. If I do this last step, if I do this last step, look what will happen. Look what will happen. My first equation stays unchanged. My second equation again stays as it was, but the last one becomes y presence is gone, but with z you have negative 4 times negative 3 is 12, plus another negative 1 it is 11. On the right hand side we will have negative 14 times negative 3. That's a bit of effort, right? It's 30, 12, 42 it is. Uh, 42 plus 9 plus negative 9, it's 33. That's the one. And here we go. My system become looking like a triangular shape. And the last operations we did with my system is we took the third row. Probably I should move it back a bit for here. We took the third row, this one, and we subtracted, subtracted three of the second rows, and that's how we come up with the new third row. What I claim now, what I claim now, I'm not going to show you the general proof for that. I don't think you will, will appreciate that at this stage of your career. What I claim that actually every system with this carefully chosen set of, of only these two types of operations, of only these two types of operations, two of them, one of them was the row swap. Okay? We were swapping rows here. We were swapping rows here. And the second one is the this kind of operation, which officially is called, if I'm not mistaken, officially is called row reduction. Official name for the second operation is the row reduction. So what I claim is that every system, no matter how complex it is, no matter how many variables it has, it can be brought down to the triangular shape. We haven't discussed the triangular shape in full details yet, but we will, will in a second. Can be brought down to this triangular shape with only these two operations. And we will call from now on them elementary row operations. Listen to this again. Every system can be taken down to the triangular shape, triangular in quotes yet, uh, by doing just carefully chosen set of two elementary operations, row swap and row reduction. And the idea of the whole thing is just you pick up an equation and you use the element in that equation, like here, you use one of the coefficients to vanish everything underneath. Let me just put this in writing for you. Here we go. It's, I, this is this, this part. It's called elementary row operations. So we figure out with you that two operations, one of them is a row swap, and the other one is row reduction. One of them is a row swap, and the other one is row reduction is enough to convert every system down to the triangular shape. Sometimes, sometimes, some books actually add another operation to this three. It is, this, is the, the, this is the third one, which is called row scaling, row non-zero scaling. So you can multiply every equation with a non-zero scalar without affecting anything. Sometimes you may find this third one useful to make your workings easier, arithmetically easier. But this is not a necessary, that this is not like a compulsory operation which needs to be present every time. First two is enough. But sometimes scaling may be also an optional one, but it might be useful to make your numbers a little bit easier. So in the chapter three, we're going to look at this method of bringing the system to the triangular form in the <coughs> systematic way. We're not, it doesn't mean we're going to do lots of these things. No, I'm going to torture you with this much. In fact, I will offer you a rather efficient way to avoid doing much of the arithmetic. Well, you have to do it anyway, because you have tests coming and you have to do exam coming in, at least on those two occasions, you have to demonstrate that you're capable of performing this transition from the any system down to the triangular one. So you have to put some effort into practicing with it. But I don't want to spend too much time on this in class. I mean, in lecture class, you will spend lots of time on this in your, your tutorials. I'll, I'll show you some efficient way to, of doing that. I mean, here, the way we do it. Uh, we will. I was saying, actually, we will look at this way of bringing the system down to the triangular one, but not from the arithmetic point of view, but from the general scope of properties and the mechanics of this, of this whole process from system down to the triangular shape. Uh, 